Kia ora and welcome back to the Becoming Podcast. Today we have someone very special back with us for the second time, one of the Shungite sisters, Hello, Catherine hello. Taken. Thank you very much for coming back in here. Got some wonderful information to share. But before we get into that, quick thank you to our sponsors, Jim at dreaming.eu and the Boutique Hotel Leonardo here in Poltals. Hey, wonderful to have you here. I see you wearing you. a bee necklace. Uh-huh. We've got some bee information. So tell us, tell us what the... the I mean, we were here for the first time and you explained about Shungite. Do you want to give a quick explanation about the Shungite before we get onto the bees? Yeah, why not? Okay. Definitely. So, uh, I've been working with Shungite for some time now and one of the things that Shungite is fabulous for is for harmonising electromagnetic frequencies. And I am very passionate about bees and I've always wanted to have bees. And when I discovered that the shungite, which is a mineraloid that came from a meteor that hit an area in Russia, and they discovered that it had lots and lots of brilliant qualities. Not only does it purify water, but it harmonizes EMFs, it helps with things like insomnia, blood issues, etc. So when I started to do this research and realized that shungite helps EMFs, I was like, oh, hang on a second. Mm -hmm. I had heard about the fact that the bees have been suffering yes. from colony collapse disorder. Right. And I did some research and was looking at this chap in America called Derek Conduit. Yes. And he started this whole movement incorporating shungite with bees. Now, I've been wanting to have bees for a very long time. And in fact, this week, since I last saw you actually, we've had four beehives arrive. Wow. At home. Wow. Exciting. And it's, mad- it's so That's exciting. Cool. It's so magical Excellent. Excellent. because... I think, well, really, we should talk about the insects, shouldn't we? To go, yes. go back a little, yeah. shall we? Yeah. So, um, obviously, we know that pollinators are super, super important to our planet. Yeah. And without them, there is no humanity. Yes. And I don't know if you remember when you were younger, going on car drives, yes. and your windscreen would be splattered yes, with right. insects. It's forever cleaning. Forever yeah. cleaning. Yeah. Sometimes you even have to stop at the garage, yes. washing yeah. it off, yeah. scrubbing them off, and yeah. then starting again. Yeah. And now... Nothing, nothing. You could, you could drive for hours, couldn't you? Yeah. And, and nothing on there at yeah. all. So in fact, there's been a 70% drop wow. of insects generally around the world. Wow. Now that's really disconcerting. Yeah. Right. And of those, how many of those are pollinators? Yes. Well, 70% of our produce needs pollinators. Mm-hmm. So if we don't have the pollinators, you end up having to do it by hand. Yeah. And in fact, uh, one of the essential oils, vanilla in Madagascar, yeah is actually hand pollinated. Oh, wow. They take oh, really? 3,000 people on one particular day when the flowers uh, are in bloom yes. and they take little cotton buds and they have to hand pollinate them. Can you imagine if we get to that point yeah. in our civilization yeah. that humanity can only have produce once it's been yeah. pollinated yeah. by yeah. humans? Yeah. No, that's, that's... We have to do something <clears throat> and we have to look at why. Yeah. And what he realized is that Colony collapse disorder is not only from things like the pesticides and Mm -hmm. the pollutants, but it's also from the increase of radiation. Right. And this is because bees use the electromagnetic field of the earth to navigate. Mm -hmm. So when they go out, they are using that to find their way back in again. Sure. And because of the increase, they get discombobulated. So they they can't find their way back. And if they die on their way back, then the queen and the brood yeah. then perish. Yes. And that's why the colony collapses. Right. So taking that information, we were like, okay. And this chap, Derek, realized that simply by adding some shungite, what it does, because it attenuates the electromagnetic field. Shall mm-hmm. I explain that? Yes. So what happens is we have man-made radiation. Yep. So since the time of electricity, everything that we've produced, so the 5G towers, uh, any towers to be honest, uh, mobile phones, Mm -hmm. televisions, Mm -hmm. uh, fridges, freezers, they all create some level of radiation. And that is all left rotating. Right. So we are right rotating as natural human beings. So the earth, the sun and ourselves, we rotate to the right. And what's happening is that left rotation is creating the imbalance, which then causes the problems in in us as humans and also in the insects. So what they discovered with shungite is that by wearing a piece of shungite Mm -hmm. or having some shungite on you, it'll produce like a little bubble 
a kind of a protection around yeah. you and that harmonizes those frequencies right. so it makes right. it harmless and they call that attenuation so okay. it attenuates okay. so with the bees mm -hmm. what they discovered is if you add to the front of a beehive a tray yes that they have to go in and out with right and you add shungite powder this is a pot of shungite powder here very yeah. very fine yes, yeah. very very messy stuff okay so it's like soot oh, very you know, fine, carbon very yes. high yeah. carbon content yeah. and when they put that at the entrance of the hive the bees come in and out now the bees know about shungite i'm absolutely convinced of it yeah. they cover themselves in this so okay. they go in bee color normal yeah. and they come out black right, right and then they go off and fly now when they go and fly it puts them into a little bubble mm -hmm. of emf protection okay meaning that yes. they can carry on navigating right because they're not affected right, right and we've seen this time and time again yeah. prevent colony collapse disorder okay okay now, it's magical magical okay. but what we also do is we add some nuggets at the in the tray yeah and these nuggets are sort of permanent, chunkier pieces. Yes. You know? Again, very messy. But these pieces alone, and the reason we put three in is uh, because three pieces of shungite create an extra coherent energy field. Right, right. So when you have the three pieces together, the bees, if all of the powder gets blown away for whatever reason, they can still cover themselves right. with, and they only need like molecules, like little sure. tiny particles. Yes, yes, yes. Just yes, that yes. much yeah. is good enough yeah. on their on their little wings and on their yeah. um, on their bodies for them to be protected. Wow. So uh, once they've done that, they are then free to come and go. Yeah. And it also, if you paint the outside, just the outside of the beehive mm -hmm. in shungite paint, mm -hmm. which is what we've been developing, which yeah. is quite exciting hot off the press, yeah. um, it creates what's known as a Faraday cage. Okay. And that Faraday cage protects the inhabitants on the inside right. from all the EMF radiation. Yeah. 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 So yeah. those bees, when they come in from a hard day, doing everything they're dealing with, yes. they can recover and recoup really quickly, ready for the next day. Right, right. So it's a sort of three-pronged approach. Yes. So we paint the outside of the hives, yeah. we adapt the front to put on a tray, Put in the powder, yep. put a couple of nuggets, and that's you kind of yeah. set up. So they're coming in for a shungite shower. They are coming in to be shungited. They're shungited, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool. Absolutely. Have they done any studies or anything to find out how far they're going? Is it with the shungite? Is it a, a further distance from the hive? or? Well, bees are really fascinating. So mm. there's loads of fascinating tips and facts about bees. I could go on for a long time about this. But bees tend to fly in a straight line. Right. So they don't go in the different directions. But it's not that they go any further. What's the fascinating bit is that as they're flying, they are dropping tiny particles of shungite into our neighborhood, environment. into yes. the environment. Yeah. Yeah. And because shungite absorbs toxins, yeah. even toxins like Roundup, you know, that they yes, use in yeah, the garden. Yeah, yeah. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, or to kill yeah. off your dandelions, yeah. which dandelions are one of the yeah, exactly. most nutritious yeah. you know, medicinal, plant medicinal we plants have. we have. Yeah, so yeah. we want to keep our dandelions. Yeah. Uh, they taste a bit like broccoli, if you've ever... Yeah. Uh, br uh, Brussels sprout, not, not yeah, broccoli. Yeah. They taste a bit like <laughs> a Brussels sprout, if you actually cook one. Um, but, you know, so, so that um, uh, shungite that they, they use and they drop everywhere yeah. is actually purifying the land and the flora and fauna in the area. Right. And what you see is you begin to see the flora and fauna change. Yes, yes, starts yes. to look better, starts yeah. to become more flourishing. Yeah. And over time, I'd be I'd be surprised if you don't see increase in yield on everything, sure. including sure. your vegetables. Because we use shungite in agriculture too at home. Yeah. So wherever I have, for example, chilies growing, potatoes growing, we add shungite powder. Okay. And what you do is, before the planting, mm -hmm. and then after the planting, you would mix in shungite powder. Okay. And what I, it also has some other benefits. It regulates temperature, right. removes the toxins, yep. helps with the sunlight. It, it, does, it helps with photosynthesis, and yes. it helps with yeah. germination. So it's like a little magical, you yeah, know, really a magical fertiliser of your own as well. Yes. You know? So yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's clever stuff. So yes. that's what we sort of incorporate with, with the bees. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's 
the interest in bees that you have. I mean, with Shungite, you explained last time, and if you haven't seen the video on, on the last interview we had with Catherine, please have a look at that as well. And also, while you're here, like, subscribe, and uh, and uh, and share this uh, with people so we can get you know, this information out to more and more people as we go along. Um, what was your interest really in in the Shungite and the bees, the, the connection there? I mean, you, were, you said, that uh, you're interested in the bees for a long time and then this, this gentleman in America and that sort of brought it together but you had an interest in Shungite before that. Oh yes, so my interest happened during the Covid period. Right. So I was, uh, a, I am a massage therapist yep. and I ha couldn't work as a therapist over the Covid period and so I started doing some research and I was researching into the rollout of 5G. Right. And I was just curious, you know, always been interested in energy, vibration, frequency mm. and always had a concern about the towers. My mm. mum... Uh, lived, we lived as children very near a tower right. and uh, she subsequently developed cancer and yes. she, she died. Yes. Um, my father was a captain of nuclear submarines, he was on board a radioactive bubble wow. and uh, yes. I'm sure that yeah. might have had something to do with his demise and it made me just start questioning a lot of yes. things and I think when I realised that 5G was eight times more powerful than four, yes. it wasn't just fifth generation so you could download yeah. your video in a second. Yes. There was something more going on yeah, yeah. and without the safety testing you know without solid safety testing to prove that this does not have any harm on humans mm -hmm. that that started the, the the questions and and then that really then made me look at not only hum humans but also animals and plants and insects and when i realized that potentially this also is affecting our bees mm. as like, I really want to do something so if I can't solve the world's problems from up here yeah. I'm going to try from down here Fantastic. I'm going to do it on the roots level which yes. is yes. what we're doing at the moment with the project that we're running sure. in, in Mallorca sure. so yeah. um, which is quite an exciting project yeah yeah and it's not only um, in Mallorca but also all places around the world if you have a, um, a lot of places in Mallorca here we're in apartments we don't really have a garden but we have a terrace and we could also have some plants here. We could do something with those oh, definitely. little Absolutely. holdings, you know, where people have. It's yeah, you can you can certainly buy more bee attracting plants, so mm -hmm. you can place them on your terraces. So sure. uh, they love the colours like that are white and yellow and pink, and yes. so the more colours that you can to yeah. encourage them, they yeah. love all the herbaceous. So things like rosemary, which is great for absorbing EMFs as well. Mm -hmm. Rosemary is fantastic. You can drink rosemary tea yep. if you're electromagnetic uh, frequency sensitive. Right. Um, lavender, all mm -hmm. of those. And they're good hardy plants, yep. especially in Mallorca for growing. They don't require lots of watering. Right. So they're right. nice sturdy ones that yes. everyone can plant. Yep. You can also put up carpenter bee homes. You know, you right. can make them with the kids. Yes. Lots of different places with lots of holes for them yeah. to find a home to yes. encourage more pollinators. It doesn't have to be the honeybees. Right. But if you're interested in honeybees and would like to have them but are too busy, yes. that's the people that we're looking for. Right. So people here in Mallorca, the Shungite Bee Project is directed towards those people that would like to have hives, mm -hmm. but they don't have the time or the knowledge or the experience yeah. because we're working with a team of beekeepers. Mm -hmm. Their company is called Abelli Floor, okay. and uh, they provide that service. Right. So they'll come to your home, they'll have an assessment and see how many hives you can potentially have, yeah. and then per hive you pay a monthly fee. Okay. And then they look after everything, okay. and then they just bring you the honey. Right. Now the best thing about this whole thing <laughs> is that the honey has been influenced by the shungite yes. that the bees have been. Right. So the infusion yes. would in theory make the honey shungite honey. Yeah. So we are now working with a lab here to have that honey assessed right. so that we can scientifically show. Yes, yes, because yes, yes. shungite is known as the antioxidant of the 21st century, mm -hmm. Just imagine if some of that goodness from the shungite yeah. has somehow penetrated into the honey yes. and then we can tell everyone we have shungite honey. Yeah, fantastic. And so maybe yeah. Mallorca becomes the land of shungite honey yeah, yeah. and we yeah, have yeah. all these people in different areas yeah. all producing yes. shungite honey and having bees that are thriving. And that's yeah. the thing, shungite helps them thrive. Right. You know, very quickly with shungai added, you'll see that the second layer of the beehive can be added 
It's incredible right, to right, watch. Right. And over an eleven week period, I think they said there five hundred thousand more bees in this one particular test site really? wow. were was noticed over an eleven week period. Wow. So if we can you know, protect our bees mm -hmm. from the effects of all the things, the pesticides, the yeah. EMS, etc. Yeah. And we can see our area thriving on the yes. ground roots level up, yes. you'll start to see a real difference. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mallorca yeah. is a very popular base for honey anyway. There are many, many amateur beekeepers yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Many. There's a big association here. In fact, there are okay. two associations here. Yeah. And even in November, they have a big honey festival. Oh, right. So okay. it's yeah. quite important and passionate for the people that live here. Yeah. So we just want to find more people that want to be part of that project. Really. Sure. So with the honey, is there, with the Shungite, is there a different colour to it? Or is it much the same as, a, as, a, as the, what, the wild honey that you... It's quite clear. Yeah. It's quite a clear runny honey, okay. you know, that seems to be produced. Yes. Um, the taste is, well... I'm probably biased, but it's probably one of the best I've ever tasted. Yes, yes. It, it disintegrates in your mouth, and it reminds me of honey that I had when I was a child. Yes, yes. It, yeah, there's yeah. a big difference. It brought recall to memory, you know, as right. taste does so much. You know, you taste something and think, oh my God, the last time I had that, I was yeah, X, yes, or yes, yes, I remember yeah, yeah. eating that school and I hated it. Yes, yes, you know, yes. when I taste this honey, I was like, oh my goodness, all these memories of being young and free and yeah. running around and, sure. you know, just not having any responsibilities, yeah, I guess, no, no, which no, is no, quite no, nice. No. I mean, yeah. Winnie the Pooh would love it. Yeah, oh I think God. Winnie the Pooh would be uh, yeah, yeah, after yeah, us, yeah. chasing us around. Yeah, yeah. so I'm looking, looking forward to, you, <laughs> to getting and trying some of the honey at some stage, for yeah. sure. One thing um, with the bees and a lot of the, a lot of the, the younger people and some of the children are um, a little bit scared of bees, but they don't really have to be scared of them, do they? They have to just sort of, how, how would you recommend for people with you know, a couple of bees are coming close to their picnic area or doing something, how would you recommend people to, to, to work with them in some way? I think you have to understand that you're a lot bigger than them and it mm -hmm. is their defence mechanism and it's yep. the only one they have. True. So for wasps, they will sting and sting again. Yes. They, they renew their sting. Yep. So if you're going to be scared of anything, be more scared of a wasp than sure. a bee. Because a bee, once it's stung, that's, that's yes, its that's life. It. Yeah. So yeah. their life cycle isn't so long no, and we need no. to really protect them. So if you can, just be at peace. Just mm -hmm. become a little Zen Buddha yep. and stay calm, stay relaxed yes. and maybe walk away if you mm -hmm. are concerned but if you're wearing bright colors like white and yellow and all yes, this and yeah, you've got yeah, to yeah. pick the carrier yeah. the bee may be mistaking you for uh, a flower yeah. so if you are concerned go to your picnic area wearing your camo gear <laughs> your browns and your bare <laughs> keep away. yeah your bare yeah. colors you yes, know it yes, really does yes, yeah. colors they, they can really tell sure so you know wear your darker colors and, and yeah. you probably will miss out yes. on that and then yeah. for wasps the really good t technique is to put some ham or some tuna Okay. somewhere else okay. for them to be attracted to. Right, right. Um, but for me and bees, just remember that every single bee counts. Yeah, yeah. We really do. And bees come in all different sizes. It's not just the no. iconic bumblebee that's yes. the black and yellow one. Yes, yes. There are little honeybees that look like very boring brown, right. smaller size than a wasp. Yes. You know, They don't yeah. have the long... No spiky scary yeah. looking bottom yeah. they have little subby ones yes. and so it's just being aware that just give them some space yes. you know yeah. and allow them yeah. to have their space i think if you do the buddhist technique and you know that that we're not here to take anyone else's life yeah that yeah. every everything has its its you know totally especially at the moment you know we're in a in our fifth major extinction event um, on this planet um, so you know we have to be careful of, of all the souls and all the beings that are here and if, if there's a bee inside you know don't just be brutal get a, a little glass and a little tissue or something and then catch it and then let it out take, let's take some time and, and it actually makes yeah. you feel good when you do something like that rather than the opposite all insects yeah. You know, when your children are stamping on ants and, you know, yep. playing around, just try and educate them, you yes, know, yeah, to yeah. So, show them that we need to prevent the sixth extinction, yep. which they believe that sugar can do that yeah. if we right. get enough of it around the world, yes, yeah, if yeah. we can spread it. And that's, the, the bees are doing their bit, yes. or the sugar bees are, yes. so they're spreading all the powder in a macro format. Yeah. But we as adults can also do the same. So sure. that's part of another project that we're running, which will be the Shungai Grid project. Okay. And then what we're doing is offering a bag like this, where you get 21 
in a biocompostable bag, okay. 21 pieces of shungite yes. that you can either put in your garden mm -hmm. to help set a grid up if you're doing your vegetables, yeah. or you can take on your bicycle ride, your walk with the family, and you can place your shungite, ideally in little groups of three around, right. in maybe a place that's significant and important to you. Yes. Maybe you want to set some intentions. Maybe you want to pray and think of somebody that has gone before you. Yeah. Maybe you do that and you take that and you spread this shungite yes. around the world. And there's plenty of it yeah. in the mine in Russia. Well, so yeah, yeah. we would have to keep going, intensify the pace for another 200 years before we would right. limit the amount of shungite right. that's there. Right. So that's been a special um, gift to us, hasn't it? Really? It really is the yeah. gift. It yeah. is a beautiful gift for this planet. Uh, like I say, what a lovely natural solution yeah. to to some problems that we, definitely, we currently have found. Ourselves. And um, you mentioned before about um, some paint that you're in, in the process of, of making. Um, are you allowed to share a little bit of that, about that at the moment? Because you said you put it over the hives. Yeah. Or you're going to. Have you done it on yours yet? Or is it yep, so done it on ours. Okay. So they're already. I just uh, combined some shungite with um, some bright yellow paint. Okay. Obviously it changes the colour a bit because shungite sure. is, is black. Um, but we're looking into... Um, yes, can't really say too much. But we're looking it's into okay. how we can incorporate Shungite in, in paints yes. for wellness in buildings, right, in, right. in all settings, you know, yeah. things like hospitals, schools, yes. homes, the yeah, lot. Uh, we're right at the, uh, probably the most sensitive point of that, but um, yeah, we will reveal all yeah. as soon as we are at a stage where we can communicate what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. watch out, you'll yeah. be uh, hopefully seeing it on the, on the high street or I mean, online. Fantastic, because one of the many things that I did was in Northern California, north of San Francisco, uh, intentional community there. I did a, a cob building, earth building apprenticeship there. One oh, of the many really? things that I did. And we used to make up our own paints from the natural colours of the land oh. and then put it into these cob buildings, which felt fantastic anyway. But putting the, having the shungite in the paint as well would just actually, you know, would be yeah. totally amazing to, to put that in there. Yeah, you know, imagine that harmonious. Anyway biocompatible yeah. experience yes. that you go into there and you go into your Faraday cage yes. yeah. of wellness. Yes. You know, so it doesn't matter what's going on in the chaos outside. No. When you no. come back to your home, which is where your heart is, where yeah. you're there to rest and recuperate, yeah. imagine being a little bee. Yes. Yeah, you know, exactly. having your time just to recuperate yeah, before yeah, the next be day. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. for the cells in your body, wouldn't it? Oh, be fantastic. totally. Be really good, really yeah. good. Fantastic. Um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to mention before we sort of... Well, just to get in contact, you know. Okay, and how can people do that? Well, you can either literally take up, pick up the phone and call me, and we'll yep. put the details up. Yes. Uh, we have a website, Angel of Wellness. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's www.angelofwellness.co.uk. Yep. You can find us on there. Um, but probably more in the social media world, you'd see us as Shungite sisters. Okay. So I'm in business yep. with my sister. Yes. Both of us now even TikTok. So we've got Instagram yep. Yep. and TikTok. Um, but it's all about the education. Sure. So it's we we TikTok once a day, each of us. Yep. Um, we've made it into a bit of a competition to make it a bit more fun. Yes. And we have to keep thinking up new ideas. So anyone that we meet or has had any interaction with Shungite, we try and do a one and a half minute quick interview, you're like, sure. why do you like Shungite or yes, something? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we're just loading up content all the time. So right. you can find us there too. Fantastic. But we have Fantastic. our online shop. Yeah. Um, I'm based in Mallorca and my sister's based in the UK. And so either or we can cover the whole of the world, yes. whether we're sending within the UK or within yeah. Europe. She yeah. has yeah. the same yeah. stock of materials that I have here in, in Mallorca as, as yes. she does in yeah, the yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cover all areas. And yeah, cover the world. <laughs> cover the world. Oh, the sugar. Sugar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Know. Thank you very much. Catherine Taken, thank you very much for coming back in. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this one talking about the bees. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, share these videos, these wonderful people that were coming in here and sharing their their knowledge, their experience, and what they're giving back to Pachamama, Mother Earth, and, and the world as well. So, you know, huge thank you for that. Big thank you to our sponsors, uh, Jim at uh, dreaming.eu and the Boutique Hill Hotel here, Leonardo. So thank you very much. And stay tuned. Hit that notif notification button, that bell, uh, so you can find out when we have new guests and new information that we're sharing with you. So all the very best, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you.